Well, um, I don't think anybody expected today's news to happen, but let me talk to you guys before we all jump off a bridge. What is up, Finn fans? So I made my video today making the picks. Then I went and was on All Dolphins podcast, which was pretty cool with Alan Pupart, Omar Kelly, and Reason. And I was like, all right, getting crazy in my house right now. I need to just relax. And then, boom, the news breaks that the Dolphins and Vic Fangio part ways. So this is a statement from Mike McDaniel. He says, I want to thank Vic for his contribution in 2023. Uh, when he assessed the season, it became apparent that this was the best path forward for all parties involved. Now we turn our focus to 2024 and beyond with urgency as we identify the best candidates to lead our defense moving forward, remain steadfast, committing to building, uh, to develop our players and the building and to building a winning team and sustainable success. So somewhat of surprise. Now it seems like at, at face value, Vic Fangio came here was a lot about the money because if you remember him talking about the Philadelphia Eagles, he was saying like, oh, essentially, you know, if things would have panned out differently, yada, yada, blah, 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 all that stuff. So it, it, it was weird at first, right? I want to say this, right? Now that Vic Fangio is not the Miami Dolphins defensive coordinator anymore, I'm not going to sit up here and be like, he sucked. I told you guys, blah, 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 and this and that, because he didn't. He didn't. A lot of people want to pile on because of what happened against the Bills, what happened against the Chiefs, what happened against the Ravens, and a lot of people want to say he sucked, he was horrible, this, this, and that, and it's just there's aspects of his game, aspects of his coaching that didn't pair well with the Dolphins, but to sit here and blame him and blame that defense for the Bills and, and Chiefs lost, I 14-7. Um, they, the Miami Dolphins defense down to what? No pass rushers, because at the point where the Bills started to score in the fourth quarter on offense, AVG was gone, Cameron Good was gone, Jalen Phillips was gone, Bradley Chubb was gone. Like, we had nobody, and then they went off. Like, it, you can't really doubt them, but for most of the game, the Dolphins' offense was the problem there when our defense was holding them, and we had a punt return. Again, Crossman, why is he still hired here maybe he'll be gone Kansas City Chiefs game how many times do we hold him to field goals you know everyone looks at stats and all passer rating and this and that but at the end of the day they don't score a touchdown until the fourth quarter and for most of the game we are forcing them to kick field goals and our offense isn't doing garbage again with Houston Irvin Reed as our pass rushers got to put a little bit of respect on Vic Fangio's name that being said though there's the, the other aspect of Vic Fangio where he is a little bit outdated, it seems like, right? And this is where I go into kind of what the players feel. Now, this is from Javon Holland's dad. He says, everyone loves the iPhone, but nobody wants the iPhone 1 upgrade. That's a little different there. This is from Cam Smith. Unlock. A lot, you know, we were wondering why is Eli Apple out there and not Cam Smith? Why not at least try Cam Smith out there? And now he said unlock, which I thought was really, really interesting. Then we have um, this video from Javon Holland kicking rocks. And that's his his uh instagram we have this from jalen ramsey who liked uh cam smith's unlocking he liked the firing of vic fangio very very interesting as well and then we also have this audio here of drew rosenhouse there were quite a few players on the team that didn't necessarily get along with fangio and so it wasn't a great relationship with many of the players. There were some guys that loved them, but there was quite a few that didn't. It definitely wasn't a unanimous positive relationship. So there, there are aspects of Vic Fangio and what had happened with Vic Fangio and what happened with this defense uh, that led to probably the parting of ways because – Mike McDaniel listens to the players, and he probably listened and noticed that, you know, 
Jalen Ramsey. They asked him, are you going to be following the number one receiver? Are you going to follow so-and-so from side to side or whatever, whether it was Stefan Diggs, whether it was whoever? And he says, it's not up to me. I'd love to, but it's not up to me. Um, and there was a lot of times where I, when I'm breaking down film, I'm noticing that our secondary is running into each other. You have, you know, a lot of it has to do with the quality of player, but also it has to do with confusion. And there was the stubbornness of Vic Fangio. But again, when it worked, it worked. And it worked really well. And then when it didn't work and when an injuries start piling up, he made something out of nothing. But, you know, he, he's moving on. Most likely he's going to Philly. He has family in Pennsylvania. Um, he already said that, um, you know, I, you know, if if things would have happened differently, I probably would have stayed with the Eagles or, you know, I can't really say much on that right now, yada, yada. And now they have an opening with uh, them firing their defensive coordinator. So he's probably going to go to Philly, which it is what it is. I'm not, I'm not as stressed as other people are. A lot of people, you know, saw the, the you know, the parting of ways and it wasn't a firing. It was a mutual parting of ways. Um, as oh my god, here we go! Dolphins collapse and six and eleven, six and whatever win, six and eleven, and we're not going to win any games. And I don't see it that way. Uh, there's a ton of defensive candidates out there that the Dolphins can bring. Uh, there's a ton of internal candidates from Campanile to Ronaldo Hill. To, you know, there's a lot of possibilities for a defensive coordinator, and maybe they bring in a guy who sees what we have and can get the best out of what we have instead of having to completely revamp the defense like we did this year. And it took a couple of weeks for them, you know, to get going. But you see, Javon Holland, even Trill Williams, uh, Jalen Ramsey, Cam Smith, like all of the secondary was not happy. Watch all of a sudden Xavier Howard want to come back and restructure his contract, which that'd be cool. You know, we need some help on that side. Uh, but the, it sucks. But on the flip side, it doesn't. You know, I, I'm very indifferent about the move. Would, if he would have stayed, would I have been angry? No. With him leaving, am I angry? No. Um, we'll see who we bring in. Now, there are there were candidates that we interviewed that are available. And then there are candidates. That, so I got a video plan for tomorrow now because I have to do all my research. I have to look into things. I have to talk to people. I have to do a lot of stuff to see possible candidates, this, 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 and that. Um, I had an offensive line video plan for tomorrow. That's going to have to be moved to Friday. Um, but I've got a lot of interviews to do. Got a lot of processes to do. Got a lot of people to talk to. Um, it's going to be interesting. Bring in somebody that's going to help this defense. Bring in somebody that's going to put our players in the right situation. Bring in, put in somebody that, you know, knows. Okay, we're going to play man because so and so is really good at man. Or I'm going to, you know, turn it around. This, this, and that. Now, are they going to stay in a three four? They're going to go to a four three. It, it all depends. This defense kind of seems like it runs on a three four, but you very easily could switch it to a four three, especially with the way that Sealer and um, Wilkins play on the inside. It's a lot of things can change. A lot of things can change, but I'm not upset about this. I'm not at all. Um, moving forward, just got to do the right things. You got to stay healthy, most importantly, and uh, go get your guy. But I have a video plan for tomorrow. Like I said, I got to do my research. I'm going to have like candidates, internal uh, upgrades or like promotions, and then dream which is guys that if we got would be ridiculous, but I doubt that would happen. So I have different tiers of candidates that uh, I'm thinking of uh, for the new DC situation and new DC spot. But here we go. Off season starts and it's already starting crazy. Dolphins still have to get the cap space situated. Dolphins, you know, focus on free agency, focusing on their own free agents. Then we go into the draft and never stop. Like I said, I never take off never ever take off so comment below what do you guys think of uh, Vic Fangio moving on are you happy with it are you upset with it are you in the same boat as me where you're like hey it is what it is there are capable options out there that they can go out and grab um I honestly and again I'll repeat this one last time before I end the video I think it was more of Vic Fangio probably was like uh, I, I had fun but it, it, it it's this just isn't working 
And Mike McDaniel probably listened to the players and being like, you know, there's too much button heads and there's too much forcing of things. Let's just, it's like staying with someone for the kids. And the kids hate the husband. <laughs> so that's at the point where you're just like, let's, we'll just part ways. So again, comment below. I'm very interested in what you guys have to say. I will see you guys tomorrow with the candidate video. Um, and then I'll see you guys Friday with the offensive line video. And then I still have to, I have so many videos to make. Again, if you haven't subscribed yet, hit that subscribe button. I appreciate the heck out of you. Go check out the collab on All Dolphins Podcast. It was fun as heck. And other than that, like usual, stay classy. FN's up.